by a U.S. Navy fighter jet. As NPR's David Wellner reports, Russia called that downing an act of aggression, warning that all aircraft entering its zone of operations above Syria will be considered target. The hotline between a U.S. air operations center in Qatar and its Russian counterpart in Syria remains open. We'll work diplomatically and militarily in the coming hours to, to reestablish deconfliction. The Russian Federation has indicated that their purpose in Syria, like ours, is, uh, is to defeat ISIS, and we'll see if that's true here in the coming hours. Dunford cited a 2001 authorization for the use of military force as legal grounds for downing the Syrian war plane. If you're basically just enforcing a stalemate with Russia there, helping the other side enforce the same stalemate, how can that possibly accomplish anything? So in theory, Assad isn't the issue for the United States, right? The U.S. narrative is that we're there to fight ISIS, Daesh, whatever you want to call it. Um, Assad's forces, in theory, are also fighting ISIS, Daesh, whatever you want to call it, except that they're also fighting this opposition. We're supporting the opposition, in theory, against ISIS. Uh, so as long as kind of we're all, you know, I think the Russian narrative was we're all fighting ISIS, let's all get along and fight ISIS together. And they were hopeful when Donald Trump came into office that that would, um, that would hold more water uh, and the United States would be willing to cut some sorts of deals with Assad. And what we've gotten instead is the United States that still wants to fight ISIS and strike ISIS targets, but is now also striking Syrian government targets. So I guess the question here is, who will use this as a pretext to escalate tensions here? Is, is either the U.S. retaliation against Syrian targets likely to be a Russian pretext, as it seems the Defense Ministry's response is something like that, or will the Trump administration now use this uh, everything's a target uh, policy of the Russians to be a pretext for also escalating the situation? So I don't think the Russians actually want to escalate the situation. What they don't, um, they don't want to back off on their support for Assad. It is important to them that they continue to back Assad uh, for a wide range of reasons. So they have to respond somehow to a U.S. strike on a Syrian military target. Uh, unfortunately, the only thing they have at this disposal is shutting down this, um, this hotline for communication, which is actually fairly crucial. To, to avoid escalation. And the last time they did this after the U.S. strike on the Syrian base, it came back on fairly quickly. It, really what the Russians want is to cut a deal with the United States over Syria, zones of control, something like that. They want, they want to be solving this together. And I think they're frustrated that that's not working out because the United States has, uh, has turned its sights, uh, so to speak, on, um, on Assad as well as on ISIS in a much more overt way than had been the case in the past uh, with just su supporting the opposition. It seems like time is ticking really for the Russians to, to close this deal in that as time goes on, Syria doesn't have any material. It doesn't, I mean, it's running out of everything. I mean, almost everything over there that's Syrian is actually Russian with the Syrian flag painted on it. I mean, it, it, as we, as we, I mean the, the Syrian Air Force itself is, is, is practically a Russian operation. Most people have to buy their weapons somewhere, right? Uh, we're not all the United States and Russia building a whole uh, building a whole army worth of weapons for ourselves. Um, most of the rest of the world uh, buys, well, really our weapons and you know some French weapons and some other weapons. So I wouldn't um, wouldn't focus on that that much. The Russian um, operation really is a support operation. Uh, the uh, the opposition, ISIS, etc. They are fighting Syria, which is backed by Iran and Russia. They're not uh, they're not fighting Russia directly. Uh, but Russian air defenses are there, so the Russians are able to say things like, uh, you know, all of your aircraft uh, will be uh, will be in our sights. Though I suspect they were in their sights before. I mean, right. you monitor everything that goes through your airspace. And and so the question is, who's probing here for a weakness? If, uh, as you say, the Russians are frustrated and want a deal to be uh, negotiated quickly for whatever reason. I mean, my theory doesn't work, but for whatever reason. Um, uh, is the Trump administration likely to exert pressure? I think uh, the Trump administration has uh, has made it clear uh, that um, 
it will strike at Syrian military targets what, under certain circumstances. Um, you know, we can debate uh, where that fits into international law and so on and so forth, but, you know, we have two precedents now. You know, it, it's going to continue to be ugly and awful and people will continue to die. Dr. Olga Olker is director of the Russia and Eurasia program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. Doctor, thanks so much. Thank you. Support for The Takeaway comes from Curious.com, working to help people reclaim between 5 and 30 minutes a day to learn something new. Legal pitfalls. The current law is unclear now as to whether the fight that is being fought is actually legally backed by Congress. And if it actually comes to detention and we start detaining members of ISIS, uh, members of ISIS, if they have an opportunity to get into court, are certainly going to say that it's not authorized by Congress. Indiana Republican Todd Young had a question for Bellinger. If in one year, two years, God forbid five years, uh, U.S. forces remain engaged in hostilities against ISIS, and Congress still has not passed an AUMF, why do you believe the average American, the rank-and-file Hoosier, should be concerned? Under the following condition. What I say when it comes to this basketball team is the law. I would say to the American people, you should be concerned that our Congress, while saying that they are backing the military, is not giving the military the legal support that they need. Congress does not have your backs legally. Pointing to the Syrian warplane shot down over the weekend by the U.S., Connecticut Democrat Chris Murphy said without new limits imposed by Congress, there could be a developing war between the United States and the Syrian regime uh, that may end up in a major shooting conflict. Former Bush White House lawyer Bellinger said he too was worried. On Syria, I, I have to say, just on the law, I was puzzled about the statements coming out of the Pentagon that the shootdown was authorized by the 2001 AUMF. Yesterday, General Joe Dunford, who's chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, told reporters the U.S. is acting lawfully in Syria. We are there and have legal justification and the authorization to use of military force. We are prosecuting a campaign against ISIS and, uh, and Al-Qaeda in Syria. Well, a change of strategy on the part of the U.S. command. Emma Ashford is a Russia and Middle Eastern Affairs Fellow at the Cato Institute. As the anti-ISIS campaign kind of winds down to a close, and all of this is a recipe for accidental escalation of the conflict. The U.S. now has far more troops on the ground in Syria than it ever did under striking regime-associated forces, but there is a very real possibility of an accidental misunderstanding.